What do you need to know to shoot on an LED screen? I got to shoot on one last year and I have so many learnings that I want to teach you guys. Make sure you stay tuned so you can learn what are the workarounds and how to be prepared when you're gonna shoot on an LED screen. What's up guys, Kiwale. My name is Jesus Martinez and I'm a San Diego cinematographer and I specialize in commercial and documentary work. Last year, I got the opportunity to work with an LED screen and it has gotta be the coolest experience ever. The size of this thing was insane. We ended up going to View Studios in Las Vegas and it was just a massive, a massive place. It had robot arms and just so many cool gadgets that I just wanted to play with everything. Now this spot was actually for Shady Rays, which is a sunglass brand, and they were launching their like snowboarding line. Now the biggest thing with this is when you're shooting glasses, everything is so reflective, and that's what kind of brought us to the idea that maybe shooting on an LED screen, we would have an easier time with all the reflections, and it definitely helped out. Now I wanna make sure that you guys are aware that you can actually shoot stock footage and not just Unreal Engine. Now, because of the project that we were shooting, we kind of were a little bit limited on time and a lot of constraints went into place that we figured using stock footage was the best way to go rather than creating a world from scratch. Now, yes, that kind of limits part of the LED screen because the whole point of this is having full control of where you can move with the sun and rotate things around with the control of your own world in Unreal Engine. So unfortunately, we didn't get to do that, but if you are looking to do that, make sure you're aware that you have to pay a tech and you will need a world in the one you're gonna be shooting. All these costs just keep adding up. Now from the technical perspective, the first thing that we learned is that you actually need to shoot at a specific frame rate. So if I remember correctly, I think it was our shutter that we had to shift a little bit. We were able to shoot at 23.97 or so, um, but our shutter had to shift in order to be synced with their LEDs. I assume this is gonna be different in any LED screen you work on because not everyone buys from the same manufacturer and I guarantee you that these LEDs that I worked on last year are already old equipment because these keep getting upgraded every like literally months it seems like now another thing to note is how close can you be to the screen because there is actually a limit to this if you're too close to the screen you will be able to see the leds so depending on the quality of the panels and where you're shooting of course they will tell you you know our minimum our max distance like closer distance is going to be 10 feet per se i think that's right around where we were i do not recall how far we ended up going we did get pretty close um, just because we had to resize and size this stock footage that we had picked for the shoot. When it comes to lighting, this is where things really start trickle down and making it a little bit more difficult. Like yes, in theory, the LED screen, it sounds amazing when you'd have control over everything. But again, this all comes down with more pre-production and more workflow that you got to prepare for. Now, when I started lighting for the scenes, um, I started to notice that my lights, the closer we were to the screen, were starting to reflect off the actual screen because this is essentially it's a big tv right that was one thing we had to be very careful and we had to constantly be looking for was is my light reflecting off the screen so anything that was kind of a side light or so and it opened to the tv you know our led wall you would catch the reflection now this was when i was closer to the led wall when you're farther you kind of like just fades out and it's pretty fine other than that you have to cut it with like a floppy or something so the light won't get caught on the led screen we were told you can remove some panels but with everything we had to do we knew that was going to amount to at least an hour potentially of just finding out which panel putting up a light there rigging it and it just seemed like it would have taken too much time. In any future shoots that I do on an LED screen, I definitely want a menace arm or something where I can just boom my light really far and point down or be able to have that control because that was one thing I was really wishing I had was a menace arm on wheels. That would have been amazing. Now the color accuracy, this thing is very important because every LED wall is gonna be balanced to a specific Kelvin or so tint magentas and that was one thing that we realized when they told us hey we can turn the ceiling white to lift the exposure and we did it and immediately i saw the huge magenta shift now that's not to say that i think we can counterbalance it to a point where you know um what they're showing up there 
we change the color of it or the tint in the computer. This is my train of thought. I don't know, um, at least we didn't have much time to play with it then. Uh, we had a tech, which is the person that handles what goes on the wall. Um, but again, we didn't have the whole Unreal Engine, um, that kind of tech for this shoe. So if you can figure that out and dial that in in pre-production, you will be miles ahead of how my day went because if I can have that overhead ambient just kicking in soft light, that would have been amazing if I had that control over there. That would have been less lights that I needed to put up to lift my scene. How do you make it real and make everyone believe that you're in this world? Having Unreal Engine would help a little bit more because you'd have more control, right? Uh, whereas stock footage, you your light is coming from the right, you have to do it from the right, right? You have to match what you have in the stock footage. The best way to do this, and I was very impressed by our uh, producer team that got everything, which was, I believe was Laura and Holly, shout out to you guys. Um, they went out with us, if I remember correctly. Um, but we had like a little literal bench. Now this was a spot that it was gonna be people going on these, I don't know the term of it, but it's these benches that go up so you can go skiing or snowboarding, right? They ended up picking up like a bench that was for like a front yard or something. We put it all together and it just allowed us to swing the talent just a little bit, enough to make it feel more real. It brought like fake snow and like a huge fan. So we were able to blow snow onto them and it helped a lot when it came down to making the talent live in the space by bringing things from the space. All these things play a ton in how real your footage is going to look. Um, you don't just need Unreal Engine and the person standing there, you need an environment. So it really translates and communicates to the viewer that you're in that space. Overall, I really enjoy working with an LED wall. It was extremely fun having as much control as we had compared to having a green screen where you're not exactly sure, you know, I've done it with an overlay onto my computer and just overlay it through Zoom and because we had like a Zoom client I wanted to watch. So that actually helped me just viewing what our background from our stock footage, a reference to what I was lighting. Just that alone, having the green screen where you can see it just helps you so much more. Now that's all I have for you guys today. If you guys enjoyed this video, make sure to like it and subscribe for future content. I will be posting more about this if you guys wanna hear about anything else or so. Drop down your question and I'll see you on the next video.